Oh, hi everyone. It's another Wednesday and I'm here with another shop update. And I was thinking about changing the title to like a project update because it is more of a project update than what's happening in the shop. So as you can see, the sliding door are still here and they are not finished. And uh, let's see what I was doing the last week. On Thursday and Friday, I was working on the internals. I was uh, manufacturing or fabricating the lock part. So I uh, edit another flange, drilled some holes, mounted the, uh, the lock on it. And uh, the sliding door has to be somehow registered against the lock. So I created, uh, maybe I have it here somewhere. No. Maybe here. Oh, this isn't exactly it, but you get the picture. So this is a sort of a flange which is uh, connected to the uh, sliding door and it uh, flows around the C channel in uh, which the sliding door are hung and they are sliding back and forth. So uh, this one is for holding uh, uh, the belt. So here will be the belt, here will be the connection plate and the lock uh, version looks very, uh, very similar. I will use the same C channel and uh, I welded some uh, some thicker plate which will act as a lock stop. So a very simil uh, similar part and uh, I also uh, made some round over so when the lock uh, sort of uh, hits, uh, hits the piece of the metal it will nicely slide in that very positively lock. I, I will show you the, uh, the actual video here. So that was I think Thursday and on Friday I started to mount the motor and I quickly realized that I bought like a short belt. I was, I don't know what I was thinking about, but this is like a theme that goes through all of my projects that I'm, uh, I keep uh, ordering uh, a smaller amount of stuff which, uh, which I need, be that the belt or I don't know, the last project when I did the uh, and did the bunk bed with the climbing wall. I ordered a, a smaller amount of paint which I needed. So I had to run to the shop, which, which is like two hours of, of work. So yes, uh, I probably do this to save money, but I don't remember any at any occasion that I actually saved money because I had to buy more or just uh, exchange for a for bigger part, like with this belt. So uh, this cost me like 50 bucks to change, uh, to change the belt for, for slightly, slightly larger. So I have the belt uh, here, the new one. I didn't try it on, but I hope that it will be, uh, it will be enough. So that's like Thursday and Friday. And uh, Right at the moment, I knew that uh, the most of the fabrication of the top section is done. And uh, the one thing I had to do is to make a, a brackets which will hold the sensor, sensors which will tell me where the door uh, are, which, in which position exactly. So uh, I think that this, I will be able to do this like in, in half of day or, or day at the most. So I started to focus on uh, one thing which I didn't know how to pull off and if I can pull it off or if I have to outsource it to another company and that's the uh, enclosure. So I have the wall, I have the, the C channel and the, and the internals and it has to be enclosed somehow just to, uh, just to make it more appealing. So I'm thinking about a sheet metal enclosure like buy a large sheet of uh, sheet of metal, uh, probably very thin one, uh, like 0.5 millimeters. These uh, these are used for for roofing and stuff. And uh, the good thing about them is that they are pre-painted, or you can buy them pre-painted. So I can use the same color as as the frame, and uh, somehow bend it into a shape and 
Yes, that was the big conundrum to uh, to learn if I can do it by myself or I have to outsource it. And I was already thinking about uh, building a sheet metal bender, some smaller types so I can make small boxes and closures and stuff. So I built on that idea and yes, I spent two days or <laughs> three days building uh, building a metal sheet bender and yeah that's what that's what i was doing on monday tuesday and tuesday and today on wednesday so as you can see i started very simply i uh, used two l uh, l profiles which are bolted together with a, a hinge so they can uh, move like this and uh, another L channel which will be act as a press so I can press the sheet metal, uh, fix it in position and I'm also welding a straight flat bar uh, on top of it just to make it uh, like uh, more uh, rigid in this direction. So uh, and then I continued uh, with uh, the mounting, uh, mounting of this uh, fixing plate and uh, I came up with a simple solution, just weld two, uh, two uh, tubes on each, either of the side and I uh, used a cut-off bolts which I welded to the bottom section and I also added, uh, uh, added a springs so all of the top section is sort of floating and I can just tighten it, uh, tight it down with nuts and this is like the most, uh, most favorite part of, of the build because I was able to calculate or guess uh, the, the, how the spring should, uh, should be strong. So how, what is the thickness, how many, uh, how many turns, how, many, how uh, bigger the inner diameter and stuff. So the springs are just, just exactly perfectly fitting for uh, for this example so I can press down very easily but if I don't press on uh, on the top section it just uh, flows nicely so I can so I don't have to like focus uh, on picking either side and uh, sliding the sheet metal uh, inside and yes uh, all of that uh, didn't uh, work quite uh, as I thought and uh, when I was building the handles uh, and I wanted the handles to be uh, to be sticking like half a meter, so I have some leverage uh, against uh, the sheet metal because uh, the final width is about 170 centimeters, which is uh, like the exact amount of uh, of uh, width of the enclosure. And when I built and welded together the the handles and I just started to try this on, uh, I well you can see. Right? It broke off and uh, the reason is that I forgot to weld the hinges fully I just tech welded them and uh, the whole the whole assembly is quite heavy so uh, the tech welding didn't hold uh, hold everything so today I was fixing all of this I uh, welded it together and uh, yeah I started to bend sheet metal and this is the this is the result. So I already, like I was talking about uh, using the sheet metal pre-painted, so I ordered a, a sheet of sheet metal. It's uh, 200, uh, 200 centimeters by 100 centimeters and I cut off uh, a small strip just to test how it works and I think it works flawlessly. Let's take a closer look. So this is actually the, the shape uh, that I have to uh, that I have to bend. So this is the let's rotate it. So this is the top section. Uh, the motor will be hidden here. Uh, here will be the C channel. It will be uh, right against the wall. Uh, in this part, it will be screwed to the to the flanges of uh, of the inner uh, inner mechanism. And uh, uh, this uh, this is like. Uh, uh, this is like the the end of the enclosure and here will be the C channel and uh, and the internals of internals of uh, of the mechanism so I added uh, this band just to make it stronger uh, 
and uh, I think it looks nice. I was able to bend it without much of a scratches. I still have to uh, still have to put some masking tape on uh, on the mating surfaces, so uh, this will just slide over. And the sheet metal comes uh, with a, a plastic foil, so. All the machining, all the bending and everything you do with the foil on and then you have the satisfying moment of peeling the foil, foil off. So I hope that I won't get any scratches because it will be hard to, to repair. So this is like uh, the side view of the enclosure and I think it's uh, despite this is like a half a millimeter thick it's uh, quite uh, quite rigid and uh, the whole enclosure has to be wide like 320 centimeters and the, uh, the bender is only 170 and so I will divide it into two enclosures and they will be connected together on either side I will add uh, these flaps like uh, 15 millimeters uh, wide and they will be used as, uh, as a connecting plate so I can uh, push two of these enclosures together and just uh, from the inside uh, somehow maybe put a rivet like this one and uh, or maybe some uh, some screw I'm, I'm not sure I have to do some tests and the side uh, will be covered as well so I will cut a rectangular piece and uh, it will be again uh, mounted to the side with some flaps and I will use uh, the rivets and I bought rivets which are well, supposed to be the same uh, color as the enclosure both of them and the color of, um, of the, the whole door is uh, RAL 9010 and the color of uh, the sheet metal uh, matches the color of, uh, of the door but uh, this, uh, this rivet is slightly, uh, slightly brighter than, uh, than the rest of the enclosure but I think that's, uh, that will be okay. It's not that much of a difference and so I think it will be okay. So I'm very excited with uh, this one. I had a hard time building the uh, the enclosure uh, or the bender sorry and um, yeah it was a project which I thought I could do quicker and more precise and yet I learn yet again I learn that uh, yeah the, the reality uh, is uh, very different from from what I what I was thinking so the problem is that uh, I'm using like the black metal, the, the profiles, uh, the square profiles and the L, L profiles, which are uh, like the lowest quality of uh, metal you can find. It's uh, quite cheap, but uh, you can uh, find pieces which are very straight and you can find pieces which are just uh, wobbling around. So that was the problem and I uh, ran into issue when where the bending section was uh, very bent uh, downwards, which is the problem because then when you when you turn it, then it's not touching the metal properly, and uh, the uh, bending radius might might change. So yeah, that was uh, that was quite a big issue, and. Uh, I tried to sort this out by introducing heat and uh, the heat usually expands things and so when you are welding it sort of expands but when uh, it's uh, cooling down it uh, shrinks uh, into smaller uh, piece than it was before. So I was thinking okay so I have a bend like this so if I will uh, lay a straight bead from the from the bottom once it will cool down it will shrink and move upwards and boy I was wrong I still have to learn quite a lot about this because uh, what it did it bent uh, in the other direction so I don't exactly understand why because I think that uh, this section 
will uh, get uh, smaller and smaller. That means it should move upwards, but it looks like the top top section of the of the profile got longer and longer, and it uh, it bent uh, uh, the other way, and it bent like like a lot. So halfway through this uh, project, I had to scrap this part and do it again, which uh, re uh, which meant going to the shop and uh, buy uh, buy another piece of this metal. But in the end, I still end up with a slightly bent uh, bending section, but it uh, works like that. This is the proof. And I also... Where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh. So I also bent the largest piece I, I cut. And uh, I was cutting this by hand and uh, the idea, the construction idea and the bending idea is that all of the cuts will be hidden inside. So that's why I have this, uh, uh, this flap and this flap and all of the cuts are inside of the, of the enclosure. So uh, if the bender is straight and the uh, top section is straight, then uh, uh, all of the bends are straight and uh, I don't have to worry about uh, the visible cuts. So I can cut uh, freehanded with, uh, with appliers, which I did here. And this is the actual width of half of the enclosure. So it's what, like uh, 160 centimeters and uh, it bent like, like nothing. I, I just took it and uh, uh, press upon it and it was it was like nothing so I'm pretty pretty amazed by the by the straightness and once uh, this bend once I made this bend the whole sheet metal is much much uh, stronger it's just uh, it's just a this construction uh, con construction element is just making this much more more stiff so yes, that's what I was doing uh, on uh, Monday, Tuesday and today. So uh, what's next? What's next? Okay, so on Thursday and Friday, I will be doing the enclosure. I have to take some time with it because I don't have a spare uh, sheet metal because it's, it costs money, so I don't want to spend more than I uh, than more than I have to, and I really hope that this isn't the moment where I will fuck something up tremendously beyond uh, recognition and repair, and I will need another sheet of the metal uh, like like with the belt. So I would like to take uh, uh, quite some time to do this. So two days is like I think fine. And I learned that uh, cutting uh, the metal with uh, the hand pliers is okay. Yeah, I can do relatively precise, uh, precise cuts. Uh, it's not ex extremely stranding of the hand, but uh, yeah, I think I, I'm about to do it or I will do it. So uh, I have to pay extra attention to the quality of the band. So I have to cover the pliers and cover the bender and everything, every mating surface is, uh, I have to cover with some, uh, some masking tape, just not to uh, put any scratches on this. So that will be like Thursday and Friday and uh, luckily enough my son is heading to a vacation with, my, uh, with his grandmother, so I will have like uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, when I can be in the shop. So. It's uh, it's a very good thing because I am uh, I don't have enough time to to finish this, so I will be working on the uh, on mounting of the sensors. That should take me like uh, half a day, a day at the most, and then I will proceed with uh, the electronics, mounting all the wiring, uh, mounting it uh, or building the control panel. Uh, I have a metal enclosure. You know what? I will... Jesus. I will bring it. Wait. Jesus! Temporary table.
So yes, this is it. Uh, this is a metal enclosure, which uh, is already used. And uh, I like this one because it has this uh, mounting plate. So you can uh, mount everything on it. You can use uh, uh, sheet metal screws, which will uh, uh, drill through the metal plate and create the, create the tap. And yes, it's big enough to hold, uh, to hold everything. So I will, uh, I will make the structure here. There will be the control units and power supplies. Here will be uh, terminals. So the input uh, connection will go into the terminal and then it will be uh, through the uh, cable channels. It will be distributed along, uh, along the whole system. And yes, I'm very, uh, very pleased with this, uh, this enclosure. Uh, because it is deep enough, yet it is uh, not... Uh, the whole dimension of this is uh, very unusual. It's very... Uh, the low depth and the big, um, uh, big dimensions, big uh, width and uh, height, that's very, very unusual. So, I got this. It, uh, it looks perfectly. And I got this for a very nice price. And uh, I'm also gathering a lot of electronics uh, you know, for the system. And let's take a look at it. So what do I have here? Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Uh, some very thin uh, flexible tubing uh, for smaller cables which will go uh, inside of, of the, uh, the top section. Some power supplies like these ones. Uh, this is combination power supply for uh, 5 and 12 volts. I will need uh, 12 volts for the lock and 5 volts for the uh, motor encoder. And I will talk about this uh, in some future video and I will talk about the electronics and especially the programming in some special video because I think it will be uh, interesting how everything is done. So uh, one or two power supplies and yes here, here I have SSR relays which are for uh, fine controlling the speed of the motor and yeah, some uh, bigger changeover relay because I have to um, be able to change the direction so I need to change the polarity of the motor uh, so uh, this changeover relay will help me with that and let's see all the cables uh, will be marked and I uh, ordered these uh, these are hot shrink tubing which you can slide uh, on the on the cable and then just blow a hot air on them and they will uh, get smaller and uh, they will clamp around the, uh, the cable I like these better than the uh, than the plastic ones because these hold on the uh, on the cable very nicely and it doesn't slide anywhere so. I'm going to use these ones and for the terminals where I have it. Yes. For the terminals I'm using these beautiful Vago terminals. This is from the 2002 uh, product line. And they are pushing, uh, pushing type, type of terminals, so uh, I don't have to fill with uh, screws and everything. And they can stack nicely on the DIN holder. And uh, I have a very positive experience with this one. So uh, I have like 60 of them. That's how many connections the, uh, the logic needs. And speaking of the logic, I also have the control unit. It's this one. 
this is a programmable logical controller which is uh, basically a computer which has inputs and outputs which are uh, specifically made for connecting to sensors and actuators so you have uh, basic uh, digital inputs so if you uh, put some voltage across uh, these terminals uh, the control software which is running inside of this computer, inside of this PLC, will recognize this that there is something connected. So some switch is uh, some switch is switched on, or some sensor is uh, telling us, for example, the presence of uh, of a person in front of the door. So there are different types of inputs and outputs, like relays, digital outputs, analog out outputs and inputs. And yes, this is a basically a computer. There is a small single board computer running, running a Linux operating system. And uh, you can run a different kinds of software inside of this box. So you can program your own logic what, uh, uh, what to do when there is some digital input set to true, if you want to turn some relay and so on, so on, so on. So with this uh, device, uh, which is made by a Czech company called Unipi. This is from the uh, Patron product line. And with this one, it's very flexible. So the sky is uh, the limit for this. So I will be using a Node-RED operating, uh, Node-RED programming uh, interface. And it's uh, mostly programming in uh, with the graphic interface. It looks like this. So there are uh, boxes which do some uh, some logic and you uh, connect them with a line so when uh, the digital input uh, is for example activated it sends a message to uh, to the connected blocks and they uh, sort of uh, decide what to do and you can connect them in any way you like so uh, that's like a very speedy introduction into uh, this system and I can talk about this for hours so I will do probably some uh, like hour or two hours long video about programming uh, this PLC for this particular application and I will go through uh, the very basics of uh, what it is, how to run this, how to, how to program this and how to express your thoughts in the, in the programming of in the Node-RED. So uh, that will be like a very uncut version of, uh, of uh, the programming so let's see what I will came up and come up with and that's like I think everything oh no <laughs> it's not uh, last time I went into a great length uh, talking about the sensors which will tell you the position of uh, or presence of object or person in front of the door and uh, at the end, I told that uh, I have to buy some uh, special sensor which uh, is specifically made for, for this type of application. And I found one. And here it is. Okay. So, what do we have here? So, this is the sensor. And it is a microwave. Uh, type of sensor so it can detect uh, uh, that something is moving in, uh, in front of it so uh, this is the inner workings let's take a look so apparently it's running on 10.5 gigahertz the micro this is the microwave transmitter receiver the board behind it is uh, some supplementary board which uh, just uh, takes the signal from uh, from this and uh, does the logic if something is moving or not. Uh, here we can see the input connector and I luckily got the cable with it. So it needs four, uh, four wires. Two of them are for, uh, uh, for the power. I think it runs, it was, yes, it runs uh, on AC or DC between 12 to 36 volts which is perfect because I have 24 volt power supply, 24 volt DC, so I can power this directly. And this is a nice, nice thing. Because this, I think, can be tilted. 
you can mount this uh, or you will mount this on uh, on the wall or on the enclosure and you have to like turn this up and down to change uh, the where the sensor should uh, look for uh, for the movement and they have LED here with this uh, uh, light uh, how to call this light channel light light guide and since this has to be uh, movable they just mounted this inside of the light guide so it sort of pivots around the uh, the center of the LED and by the three three leads here it looks like this uh, this will have two colors probably green and a red uh, red and this potentiometer is for setting uh, the sensitivity of the system this is nice thing this is a template so you can glue this template on uh, on the enclosure and you can drill the holes uh, where the mount uh, mounting should be but sadly enough they forgot to mark the hole for the cable because the cable goes through through here so this is the sensor it costs like uh, what it is like 40 bucks 30 40 bucks so it's like uh, one from the uh, bottom uh, bottom range of, of these sensors because you can buy these for for a uh, hundred bucks and so so I'm uh, quite interested uh, if this works and if this works properly and I don't know what time is it oh I don't have watches uh, should I try this yeah let's try this it should be very fast so Casey Neistat style of, uh, of cleaning and I have somewhere the power supply for this so this is a programmable power supply it's dual channel it can go up to 40 volts and it can go up to 5 amps per channel the channels can be uh, connected uh, together in series and parallel so we can go up to 10 amps or 80, 80 volts which is very nice Ta -da. so let's see there's a small marking here which tells me that the, uh, the further to on the right there are two tildes so that means uh, that's the power supply and the two the, the other two are for uh, for signaling that there is some movement there is a small relay here and when there is a movement the relay will uh, connect these contacts together so let's let's see it should be brown and yellow where's the brown and yellow ac or dc and uh, since AC, it's ac or dc that very small part here is a rectifier so it doesn't matter in which order or which polarity do you, you use because the rectifier will take care of it so what I have here 24 volts on channel 1 it's disconnected I will connect I will connect the this one and yes and I will connect the red one oh, or brown one come on go away
Okay. So that's it. Brown and yellow. It's set to 24 volts, 500 milliamps. Let's go lower. Let's set 200. 250 50 milliamps and yeah let's let's do it oh it's blinking and it does something so it's not green on the camera I can see that it's green but it's it's red. Uh, it's blue actually, and it works. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, so that's working perfectly. So. That was very quick, a uh, very quick test and yes, you can hear the relay, maybe. Yes, so, okay, that looks like uh, it's working. So, another part which is solved. So, the, these are like, uh, or these were like, two major problems which I didn't know uh, how to or if if I will uh, be able to uh, to somehow do it so the sensor it works I have two of them I'm very pleased with this one hopefully hopefully it will have uh, a longer reach and uh, well I think there are some uh, mounting let's see Oh yes, yes. There are some information about the smallest wrench is 1.5 by 1 meter, so I think that's like a height. So when it is uh, up 1.5 meter, the radii radius is 100 1 meter, and when it is 4 meters, it will be 2.5. And it will be around 220, 210 centimeters, so it will be like 1.5 meter, which is exactly the width of, uh, of the door. So that looks very, very promising. So that's like it for today. Thanks for stopping by. And yes, as always, I'm posting daily YouTube shorts, Instagram reels and TikTok things on these platforms so if you are into this kind of content go ahead and subscribe and you will get the daily dose of what I'm doing here and how I fail miserably most of the time and if you think you are really 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 big fan of this channel you can uh, show me some support uh, by my patreon page and all of these links are below so yeah that's it and hopefully see each other next Wednesday Okay, bye. I'm going to watch the, the clicky blinky thing here for a minute. And it stopped working. Oh, it's working. Red, blue, red, blue.